what's up? Today, we're gonna make a truly great chicken quesadilla from scratch. That includes a handmade flour tortilla that is very much worth the effort. Trust me, to get started on that, I'll grab my food processor and into it, I'll combine 310 grams of all-purpose flour, eight grams of salt, five grams of sugar, 50 grams of canola or light olive oil, and then 180 grams of water. Now the lid goes on and I'll spin this for 20 to 30 seconds or until the dough comes together into a ball like this. Right now, this dough is well combined, but no gluten is formed, so it's still pretty sticky. To help with that, I'll flip it out onto my cutting board and knead it for about 60 to 90 seconds. If you don't have a food processor, don't worry about it. This dough comes together pretty easily in a medium bowl with a spoon. Just mix it until you've got a clod of dough like we do here. And while kneading, if your dough is sticking to your hand a little bit, don't be afraid to add a little bit more flour and just knead that in. Developing this gluten has made the dough stronger, but not like bread dough strong. We want flaky, tender tortillas in our case ideas and too much kneading here will make them tough and overly chewy. Next, I'll grab my gram scale and divide this dough into four equal sized pieces that are 125 grams. From there, I'll use my fingertips and palm to shape these dough pieces into something slightly more round and taut. And once I've got all four pieces rounded into balls like this, I'm going to cover them with a towel to keep them from drying out. And then I'll set them off to the side to let the gluten relax for a minute while I sort out the chicken for this quesadilla. Today, I've got two eight ounce chicken breasts, but any lean meat like steak or shrimp would also work with the marinade that's coming up. First though, I need to get these breasts into a slightly more heat friendly form factor. So I'll load them one at a time into a freezer bag and then grab a saucepan with a sturdy handle. And then I'll pound this chicken into something much flatter 15 to 25 times. I'm flattening these things because the natural tapered shape of a chicken breast keeps it from cooking evenly. If you leave them unflattened, you'll make one side dry and leathery while struggling to get the fatter side cooked all the way through. Now, once this is pounded into a roughly one inch thick cutlet like this, this, I'll set it aside, grab the second one and give it some pounding. Now both breasts go into the freezer bag and into that I'll add 10 grams of olive oil, 10 grams of salt, the zest of a whole lime, three to four minced garlic cloves, one to two grams of black pepper, three grams of chili powder, one gram of dried oregano, the juice of half of a lime, a splash of tequila, and then 10 grams of agave syrup or honey works if you don't have agave. Now I'll tumble this to get the marinade combined and evenly spread on the meat. Then I'll throw it into the fridge to marinate for 10 to 15 minutes while I preheat my grill or oven to cook the chicken and also make my tortillas. As you can see, this tortilla dough has been resting for about five minutes now. And at this point it's fully relaxed and is gonna be pretty easy to roll out. Way easier than if we went straight from the kneading process. I'll hit my board with a little flour, then my dough, then a touch more flour on top. Then I'll grab my rolling pin and give this dough a few back and forths. I'll turn it 90 degrees and repeat that. And after about two more rolls, this dough is getting a little bit sticky. So I'll flip it over so that the bottom side can get a little bit more flour on it and I'll keep on rolling. From here, it's pretty straightforward. We're just gonna give this a few more rolls, turns and flips. And at this point, if you're wondering, hey Bri, is it worth it to make your own flour tortillas? Well, in my opinion, the final product is both much better than what you could buy and only takes 15 minutes to make. So I think that's a pretty good trade-off. Most handmade versions of things are better than store-bought, but rarely do they come with such a small time commitment. Now, once I've got this rolled into a round that is roughly a 16th of an inch thick and about 10 inches across, it's time to cook it. So over at the stove, I'll drop this tortilla into a medium heat 10 inch nonstick pan. From there, I'll leave it undisturbed for about a whole minute and then start rolling out my next tortilla. That conveniently takes just about the same amount of time it takes to cook one of these things from start to finish. There's no downtime. Now, once this tortilla is bubbling up on the backside like this, I'll come back, flip it over, and then cook it for another 60 seconds, or about two and a half to three minutes in total. And once it's been gently cooked on the backside, I'll slide it over to a plate and then drop my next one. And once I've got all four of these large tortillas cooked off, I'm gonna cover them with a towel to keep them warm and pliable, and then I'm gonna quickly cook my chicken. As you can see, these breasts are looking pretty pretty well marinated. The time that it takes to cook the tortillas or 10 to 15 minutes is more than enough time for the salt to do its work and help make these things much juicier. Now I'll drop both of these breasts on a very hot grill and cook them mainly on the first side. Since these are much thinner than standard shaped breasts, they're going to cook much quicker. And the time it takes to get some nice charred grill marks on the first side is not that much longer than the time it takes to cook these all the way through. And after five to six minutes on the first side, I'll come back and flip these over and kiss 
place the backside for no longer than two minutes. By the way, if you wanted to skip the grill entirely and just bake these in a hot oven, that totally works. I would say go at 450 for about 12 to 15 minutes. Now, after two minutes of cooking these on the backside, I'll take them off, bring them inside and check the temp. A lot of people will tell you to cook your chicken breast to 165 F. And in my opinion, that's too hot and will dry out the meat under most circumstances. So I recommend that you cook your breast to 150 F. At that temperature, bacterial death occurs in only 1.5 minutes. And I'll link below to a very helpful article about chicken time and temperature that can kind of clarify some of the safety around this issue. And as you can see at 150 F, this chicken is very juicy. Plus you get all that marinated and grilled flavor going on and it's gonna taste real good, basically. Next, to get this meat into a quesadilla friendly form factor, I'm gonna slice it into thick strips, then turn it 90 degrees and dice it small. If it's too big, it's gonna stand out texturally and wreck the overall vibe of the crispy quesadilla. So I say dice it into small pieces that are no larger than half an inch across like this. Now, for the cheese. For me, the ultimate quesadilla uses three cheeses. The first is the classic pepper jack. It's melty, mild, and tastes vaguely of chili peppers. The second is mild but not sharp cheddar. There's much more flavor than pepper jack here, and thanks to its younger age, it's still quite melty. And the optional but very nice to have cheese in this mix is a mild but piquant provolone. This one brings a sharpness along with an unrivaled meltiness. That's a pretty unique combo in the cheese world. And in general, provolone is my go to when I want to have something with a really beautiful cheese pull. So for four large chicken quesadillas, I'll combine a half pound or 225 grams of self-grated pepper jack cheese, 225 grams of mild cheddar, and then 125 grams of grated provolone. For me, this three cheese blend balances cheese flavor and cheese meltiness perfectly, and it's worth the extra effort to grate your own. But if you had to go with store-bought pre-shredded Mexican blend, I totally understand. Just know that that stuff is going to melt a lot faster and will keep you from frying your tortilla for as long long as I think is ideal. Now, once my cheese is all mixed together, I'm gonna to take that same 10 inch nonstick pan from before and warm it over medium heat while I think the sponsor of this video, Seed. If you didn't know, your gut microbiome plays a huge role in supporting your overall immunity. And during the holidays, when we're all gonna be stuck on planes with sick strangers or stuck in houses with sick family members, it's a good idea to know how the two interact. When I'm traveling during the holidays, there's a couple of ways that I pay attention to this gut immune axis. Number one is trying to eat more fibrous food foods because those directly feed your gut microbiota. The other is prioritizing sleep. My sister has some very loud kids that are usually running around her house, waking me up at like 5.30 a.m. Why do kids get up so early? But probably the easiest way to support your gut slash immune health during the holidays is to take Seed's DSO-1 Daily Symbiotic. If you haven't heard of it, DSO-1 is a broad spectrum, 24 strain pre and probiotic that's formulated for systematic health and engineered to survive stomach acid, enzymes, heat, and moisture in the body so that all of the beneficial stuff gets to where it needs to go. So if you want some extra immune support this holiday season, head to the link in my description below and use code Brian at checkout for 15% off your first month supply of seeds, DSO-1 Daily Symbiotic. Now to build this quesadilla, I'm gonna grab one of my fresh and floppy handmade flour tortillas, and then I'll lay down a generous grip of my cheese blend about a cup's worth, give or take. Then I'll lay down three to four ounces of chopped grilled chicken and make sure that's well integrated with the cheese. And then I'll drop a few pinches of chopped pickled jalapenos. These are gonna bring a little bit of acidity and brightness to this very rich pile of melted cheese. And they bring that signature Tex-Mex ballpark nacho flavor. Lastly, I'll add in about a half cup of the cheese blend on top of the peeners. Then I'll fold over my tortilla and bring this to the stove. Now into my medium heat nonstick pan, I'll add a good long squeeze of neutral oil and resist the urge to be stingy here. You need a lot of oil to get this thing perfectly crisp. Now, once this oil is hot, I'll drop in my quesadilla and then use my fingers to press it into the pan to ensure even contact with the hot surface. Since flour tortillas, especially handmade ones are irregularly shaped, they don't touch flat without pressure and they'll steam under there instead of fry. So my preferred method of applying downforce to these things is to use another pan set right on top. Once that's situated, I'll cook this for 90 seconds or so on that first side and then quickly show you guys a chipotle ranch sauce to dip this dilla in after it's fried. So into a high sided container, I'll combine 125 grams of nice tasting mayo like Dukes, not sponsored, but Dukes, if you're out there, sup. Then the juice of the other half of the lime that we used in the marinade, then 10 grams of hot sauce, 50 grams of sour cream, one canned chipotle chili in adobo sauce, and then one garlic clove that I'm gonna smush through my garlic press and then drop it in. To finish, I'll drop in my immersion blender and spin everything up to combine. And if you're thinking, hey man, quesadillas really don't need sauce, do they? Well, 
Taco Bell kind of convinced me that they do, and this sauce is kind of like a tribute to their quesadilla sauce, but obviously it's fresher and much more flavorful. And in my mind, why not have sauce? Sauce good, like in general. Back at the stove, it's been a minute and a half, so I'll take a little peek at the bottom side for doneness here, and that looks real dope. It's evenly cooked and even a little bit leoparded with color, so I'll flip it over and then press it again with the extra pan and cook it on the back side for another minute and a half to two minutes. When I check back, you can see that the cheese is reaching optimal melt here and is just starting to leak out the front. I don't wanna to go too much further here because that would get messy and I would lose a lot of cheese, so I'll spin this around and check the bottom side to make sure I've gotten it well brown and nicely crisp, and ooh, baby, that's looking really professional. So from here, I'm gonna move it over to a little wire rack to cool briefly while I cook the next dilla. And that is a stunning combination of crispy starch and melted cheese. It's like an inverted thin crust cheese pizza. The tortilla itself is flaky and tender on the inside, but extremely well crisped on the outside. Plus it's much thicker than a store-bought tortilla, so it has more of that sweet, soft chewiness going on. On the inside, the three cheeses that we've got here have all turned into a flavorful goo that's holding together some juicy, tender grilled chicken. And oh yeah, how about some smoky ranch to make this thing even crazier? It's just freaking mmms all the way down, you guys. And with like half an hour of work, you too can make this quesadilla at home. I hope you try it soon. Let's eat this thing.